Welcome to Yes Bitch TV, Honey Yes God. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. If you have not done so by now, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share, okay? Also, hitting the notification bell will update you each and every time I'm uploading something new. Hey guys, and I thank you guys for joining me for this commentary today. Um, before I get on with the commentary, because you know, um, I really wasn't going to do another video because I am taking a cute little hiatus for a minute, okay? Um, but... You know I'm all about serving the girls truth and justice, bitch. And I could not allow these two major situations to pass me by and me not be able to speak about it and bring it to the round table for open discussion, okay? So we can read these mother this criminal justice system for filth. Girl, I feel like we just did that. Every week it's like something new's happening in this godforsaken land we call America, bitch, okay? And it's just like I could not allow these things to just pass me by. You know how I am. This was boiling the fuck out of my blood. Um, no matter how my personal feelings are, because I am going through something myself. Um, I lost another brother, child. Not a blood brother, but someone that I kind of grew up with in a way. <clears throat> and, you know, <sighs> he suffered from a drug overdose. And, you know, the pain of life. Um, I don't really want to get into too many specifics. Um, but just know that he was hurting and, you know, that one thing led to another and, you know, he's no longer with us. Honey. Um, but I'm over this shit. I'm tired of losing people in my life. I've lost a lot of people in my life um, in the most tragic of ways. Um, it just it gets to the point where you feel numb to it all. And I, I'm just one of those people who are like, does death even affect you anymore? And I have to tell them, like, it really does, but it's like I've learned to kind of absorb it. And then, like, maybe a year or two, I'll get into, like, a deep thought about some shit. And then that's when I release, like, all of my emotions. And it's just crazy. And it's just like, when I was told the news, I was like, whoa. Like, I just spoke to you, really. I just saw you. You seemed like you were doing fine. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. So that's just one of the messages I want to leave you all with. Like, you never know what the person next to you is going through. You never fucking know, bitch. We're around here treating people and reading people down for filth and being nasty as fuck. Don't even say good morning no more. Hi, how are you doing? Open a door for a bitch. Hope you have a great day. Every, and I understand that, you know, what's going on in the world. It feels like Pandora's box has been opened and all of the ills, wills, and the pains, bitch, are hitting the holes, you know, tenfold this time. But still, we have to treat people with respect. Again, how would you want to be treated? And then, not even just that, you just don't know what people are going through. And it's sad when you wake up the next day, because I literally just woke up the other day and saw the news, and I was like, you don't expect that. So treat people with kindness, with love, with integrity, okay? And accept people for who the fuck they are. And if you can't do that, bitch, then stay your ass at home and social distance, okay? Even after the pandemic is over, honey, stay your rotten ass at home, okay? And motherfucking um, try, and, and, and get your shit together. How about that? But uh, another friend is gone. Um, I'm so sick of it. But I've just, I just got to pray and, and, and keep myself in, 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 in good spirits, honey, because this kind of stuff can either make or break. And when I get real down and out, a lot of times it is difficult for me to come out of certain spirals. So that's why I try my best to um, just absorb it and then I'll deal with it later. But this has definitely hurt me because this was... Um, you know, we weren't close, 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 but it was some one of those people that when you finally do speak, it's like no time has passed at all. And, you know, he was just a really good person. And um, I hope that he was allowed into the gates. Amen. Um, that God saw his suffering and was just like, child, just come on home. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Every day, your name is the same. Yes, for Shirley Caesar, honey. All right, now let's get on with the commentary, shall we? The first situation we're going to be talking about is the one, well, both of these motherfucking situations are like everywhere on the news right now. But if you're stuck under a rock, we are visited by Georgia, 
Um, and we are at Brunswick, Georgia, child. Okay, and the hickory dickory dock, bitch, of the motherfucking clock. <laughs> okay, girl, like, this place is... Uh, it's like, girls, uh, we already know Jurassic Park Island was destroyed in the last movie. But if Jurassic Park Island came back, it would go to Brunswick, Georgia. Okay? With all, and hopefully it does, so it can kill all of those racist bigots out there, okay? Let's get into it. So, we have Ahmaud Aubrey. okay? He was running through his neighborhood, jogging, okay? We got the, let's run the tape, run the tape, and then we'll get into the commentary about it. Run the tape. An armed black man in Georgia. That's right, Gail. The two white men who confronted him in his neighborhood are now charged with murder and aggravated assault. Gregory and Travis McMichael, a father and son, were arrested last night. They deny any wrongdoing in the shooting death of 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery. More than two months ago, Omar Biafranca has new information and reaction from Arbery's family. This is a, a good birthday gift. You know. I wish my son was here and stuff. Marcus Arbery says he is relieved that the men accused of killing his son Ahmad last February are in the Glynn County Jail. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations arrested Gregory and Travis McMichael Thursday evening. The father and son duo told police they thought he was a burglary suspect and shot the unarmed man during a confrontation. But Arbery says his son was not a criminal. He was a well, my respect for y'all, man. After that, love people. The arrest comes just days after cell phone video was released showing the final moments of Arbery's life as he jogged in his own neighborhood. The video appears to show the McMichaels after they chased Arbery in their truck. Gregory told police Travis and Arbery fought over the shotgun before Travis shot him two times. CBS News can now confirm the video was filmed by this man. William Bryan. According to the case's previous prosecutor, the McMichaels and William Bryan were following Arbery, thinking he was a burglary suspect. The police have not said that Arbery committed a crime. He just had a good heart. And you think he deserved to be left like that by this mom? No. Arbery family attorney Lee Merritt says he also expects Bryan to be charged. My understanding is that that investigation is still ongoing. CBS News can also confirm the video was leaked by this man, Alan Tucker, the former attorney for Gregory and Travis McMichael. According to a statement, Tucker says his sole purpose in releasing the video was absolute transparency. Fellow Arbery family attorney Ben Crump says the video is what might have propelled the case forward. I believe that the video was all the probable cause you needed to arrest these murderous father and son duo. CBS News has learned new details about the former prosecutor assigned to the case, George Barnhill of the Waycross Judicial Circuit. We obtained the email Barnhill sent to the Georgia Attorney General along with his recusal letter. In it, Barnhill explains his son, who is also an attorney, had previously investigated Arbery. He also included what he claimed was the criminal history of Arbery's relatives. In that letter, does not align up with the law in the least bit. We reached out to the McMichaels, but did not hear back. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations will tell us more about this case at a press conference later on today. And there are rallies planned for Arbery, and they will go on as planned to celebrate his life on what would be his 26th birthday. Gail? Omar, the more details you hear, the tougher it is. That, that video is heartbreaking, but that video, like Attorney Crump says, I believe, turned out to be a big game changer. Thank goodness for the video and social media in this case. It totally changed this perspective. Tony? So as you all see, and I have bared witness to the filth that is humanity, um, two racist crackers, um, you know, they, they are part of the Hickory Dickory Docks, okay? Those, um, let me let me just say this because I believe and I truly believe this and I don't want to generalize the white people um, but what we have seen um, throughout our history is that white people are just <laughs> I think it's the fact that you hate yourselves I, I, and even now, I think it's because you really hate your own history. 
I think that's what it is because the what 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 gives you the okay to run someone down? First of all, you're doing what the cops are supposed to be doing. Um, I heard that they tried to use the defense of a citizen's arrest. No fucking god, honey. You did not try even try to arrest anybody. You were chasing him like he was cattle, trying to round him up. And this boy was fighting for his life, as we all bear witness to. Fighting for his life, and you guys had the nerve and audacity to shoot him. I heard the 911 call. One of the gentlemen was trying, in my opinion, to create a pattern um, about the character of who he thought this person was. That way he could feel as if he's justified in running this boy down and killing him. Honey, I saw right through the bullshit and I'm not a journalist. I'm not a fucking psychic. I could plainly see in that 911 call. If you guys have not had a chance to hear the 911 call, please feel free to go look that shit the fuck up and you will come up with the same deduction I did. These people wanted to murder this boy, but they wanted they they needed something to kind of make it justifiable. This this, this reminds me of Emmett Till's situation. But in in this situation, you have someone who's jogging in their own fucking neighborhood. And then it took prosecutors and police to finally do their fucking jobs and arrest these men. And throwing the book at them, as we've heard, wonderful. I hope they get the death penalty. And let's be honest here. Even if, let's just say, let's entertain the thought that this boy was a, ro a robber. The law clearly states if this person is fleeing and running away from the from a situation, do not engage. Do not even fire your weapon at them because you will be charged, bitch, well, even if it's manslaughter. This person is fleeing. You are no longer in immediate danger. In order to even use a firearm and to protect yourself or to use a stand your ground law, you would have, would have had to felt like you were you were in immediate danger. The video shot by the person that will also have charges um, held against them, yes, God, and I think that everyone involved in this situation should get the ultimate penalty. Whatever you can give these people, make an example out of these fuckers. Let these people know that we will no longer stand for this kind of injustice, and we will not stand for this bigotry, this discrimination. No, 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 God. We are, I don't know what the fuck it's going to take for our community, the black community, to stand the fuck up. Y'all rally when shit goes off. We need to be rallying all the motherfucking time. We need to be talking about awareness all the motherfucking time. And I'm going to be quite honest here, and some people might try to get at me, but we need to handle our own motherfucking community. That's what, because let me be honest here, and, and it'll go more into the situation that we'll be talking about in the next com piece of commentary about Sean Reed, okay? But I just want to make this overall statement, and I see this like, we are the only community that seems as if we could not unite. The only time it seems as if we unite is if a, a great evil needs to be conquered. But once that great evil is conquered, once we start feeling like the white man is hearing us, we start going back to big green back and forth with one another, shooting up our communities, adding to the devastation in our, of our own nation. Okay, so while we're out here, yes, I love the unity. I, I'm with it, like bitch together, together. But girl, we need the same unity even in our own communities with each other. Okay, we need to be motherfucking treating our neighbors like they're someone. Stop recording these these girls fighting and running 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 each other over. Ooh, child, what the fuck is wrong with me today? Running each other running each other over with cars at clubs and shit like that because you're a scary ass bitch who can't fight. Okay, don't start nothing, don't be, won't be nothing. Now you hoes are doing days in jail, months, years even, bitch, for running hoes over with these cars. Yeah, I've been seeing in videos lately, like, y'all hoes got too much time on your hands. And if you're a scary-ass bitch, you shouldn't be out there starting things you can't motherfucking finish with your hands, girl. That's just all I'm going to say on that, okay? Yes, God. Um, but, yeah, we, we see that, child... We need to stand up, girl. That's all I'm going to say about this situation. It's sad. Another brother is lost, okay? But we finally, I and mean, honestly, if it wasn't for this video, because they weren't even trying to arrest these guys in the beginning of the situation. 
Thank God for social media. Thank God for that motherfucking video. As we see, the attorney of those, the original attorney of those guys was the one who released the video. Talking about he want transparency. Girl, thank you. Thank you so much for providing us with what we needed in order to throw the book at these sorry ass motherfuckers. America, especially white America, if I have any white viewers or anybody white just happens to catch this, let me tell you something. My hate for you is not general. My hate for you is just based on the vast majority of the hateful, small-minded groups of people. And it just so happens there's a more of a majority of them than there is of the allies that we have in the white community. Okay, so no way in shape, no way, shape or form am I trying to come for the whole white population because I have to understand that we do have allies out there. But again, you guys are far and few. There are way more of these hateful, sorry ass motherfuckers out here. Girl, all I have to say is if our, vo our, if our voices really matter, if our votes really count, this outrage, this disgust, this disdain for the fucking system, we have the power to change it this coming election season. So we need to motherfucking put our money where our mouth is. We need to put all this action, all of this passion that we have going on here, we need to put it at the motherfucking voting booths. Yes, God. Okay? Yes, God. Huh. And rest in peace, Ahmaud Aubrey. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Um, my condolences to you, your loved ones, and your family. I'm so sorry that... Um, in, in a lot of ways, I hate to say that sometimes, oftentimes in tragedy, awareness is breed, bred. And we can take this now and his name will forever live on as one of the catalysts to assist us in trying to get some kind of reform done in the system. And also to touch the heart of some of these hateful bitches out here that need to see what their, what their fuckery can actually do to someone. You took someone's life. You thought Trump was going to come in and save you. No, God, girl, he's, he, no, <laughs> no. I don't think it costs anything to be nice. I don't, but then again, if it's not something that's just naturally in you, girl, I don't know. But it don't cost nothing to try to be, to be, anyway, let's move on from this. We got to talk about Sean Reed real quick. Let's roll the tape on Sean Reed. Let's roll the tape on Sean Reed, honey, okay? Indianapolis, where police fatally shoot a man after a chase, and part of that entire thing was captured on Facebook Live. Authorities say that the man was killed after shooting at an officer who chased him for reckless driving. Family members at the scene identified the victim as Sean Reed. Reed reportedly live streamed part of the chase on Facebook. So Colby Thielen is covering the story for us from our Indianapolis affiliate WTTV. Uh, Colby, uh, you know, the video is online for anyone to see. It's surreal seeing as we know exactly um, what the outcome of that video is going to be. Can you sort of tell us what happens in the video? Right, Anne Marie, first police, according to police, the chase actually started um, on I 65 on the interstate. They claimed that the driver was driving recklessly, going about 90 miles an hour, and that's what started it. Now, that video picks up short way into the chase. You can see Reed making comments that he doesn't want to go back to jail. You hear him say the officers are going to have to try a lot harder if they want to catch him. Eventually, it gets to the point where he pulls the car over a few minutes later. You can see from the video that he gets out and begins to run as he exchanges words with an officer yelling to stop. At that point in the video, you hear what sounds like a taser, and that's followed by, at our count, more than a dozen shots before that phone eventually, lying on the ground, picked up the investigation when the officers were securing the scene there. Colby, what do we know about uh, Sean Reed? Uh, have you learned that he was uh, driving under the influence? Authorities say he had a gun and used a gun, but the video does not support those claims. What are you hearing? Right, Vlad, uh, we're hoping to learn that in the toxicology report. Typically, those reports come out a couple of weeks later, and that'll have more details. Right now, we're still awaiting the coroner's report as well. As far as Reed, we're actively reaching out to family and friends that knew him best. We've seen photographs coming out of Reed dressed in an uh, Air Force uniform. So we're working to learn who he was as a person. Now, as far as the gun, police claim that they found a gun 
that did not belong to their officers there at the scene. They did not go into details about where they found that gun. They also claimed that the officer was returning fire from Reed. Now, again, we're working to confirm what exactly happened. The video doesn't give a lot of details. We've reached out to police for body camera footage. We're still waiting to hear back from them. And when that will be released, that might help answer some questions. But from the footage, as you mentioned, we don't see a gun until the shots are fired. And at that point, the phone was laying on the ground. So I'm wondering how the police department is handling the content of the video. You know, a lot of people are going to be watching it and, and sort of coming to conclusions about what they believe happened. You know, Amory, the uh, police department's already said that they have secured that video through legal channels, that they plan on using that in this internal affairs investigation, which they opened after the shooting. Right now, that officer, of course, placed on administrative leave as this investigation continues. But again, they say that they're planning on using that as evidence. And we reached out, as I mentioned, for other footage that might help give some other angles or give a, a bigger idea of what exactly led up to this and how this happened. Right now, we are still waiting on that footage. All right, uh, Kobe Thielen, uh, great reporting. Thank you very much, Kobe. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now, addressing this, I, I'm just going to give a real unpopular opinion here. Another situation where we are rallying for answers, and I get it, people. Trust me, I get it. You can't trust shit what the police got to tell the media. You can't trust a motherfucking thing, any government official, politician. If you coming out here, especially in the face of tragedy like this, where a young black boy has been gunned down by white officers, bitch, okay? Or just the police in general. Um, but I have to say, I saw the live. And one thing I would like to point out is nowhere in this live did I bear witness to a firearm? I didn't bear witness to him talking about a firearm. I didn't bear witness. He, you're fleeing the police, right? You are on a chase. So why would you shoot at them? You ho trying to hold the phone and the steering wheel at the same time. Although I would say that what he was doing was dumb as a motherfucker. And a lot of times when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. We have uh, we, we are in 2020, people. This young man is 21, so he is purviewed to have lived in the experience of when young black boys are getting gunned down for no fucking reason by law enforcement. Amen. You live in the current reality. So the fact of the matter is, and you live in Indianapolis, so I'm quite sure you know what um, racism and discrimination feels like. So you're really going to sit here and tell me that by... Getting putting yourself in that situation. This goes back to the betterment of the community as well. We want to rally, and again, I get it. This is very suspicious because now y'all are giving us lies. You said the child fired you. Y'all y'all returned fire upon him because he shot at y'all first. Nowhere in that live video did I hear a gunshot, see a gun, or even get the vibe from him that he was even that ballsy to shoot at y'all. He was trying to run the fuck away. But I'm going to let the people be the judge of that. Because, um, again, we don't know everything. And will we ever get to know any everything when it's a situation like this? Child, hell no. They are going to dust all the shit on the carpet they need to. Um, I'm glad the child did shoot this live. Because this will show that y'all gun this. Look, look y'all hurt you. In the live, there were so many gunshots. I think there was more than a dozen. He had no shirt on. He was too busy trying to hold his pants up. What in the way? And he had his phone down. Please tell me where you thought that there was a gun and it's broad daylight. This is the stuff that I'm talking about. We have seen in other videos where law enforcement, they are able to apprehend a suspect without using um, um, fatal means. You have bullet guns, you have tasers, you have stun guns, you have nightsticks, you have billy clubs. I don't under motherfucking stand why it is, and he's running away from you all, and you are discharging your weapon in a public open place. You don't know where those other bullets are gonna go. And then in the video, you just hear the officer, oh fuck, man, oh mother fuck, man, oh fuck, oh fuck. Girl, 
I, I just don't understand where people just get the nerve to just pull these guns. Like, y'all need to stop. See, y'all need to, like, Paris, you can't have a gun. The law enforcement there don't have a gun. They have motherfucking stun guns and billy clubs, and they'll get your ass together. I don't understand, like, why we feel the need to always pull these fucking guns out all the time. Why is it the first thing that goes to your mind? So at this point, let me sum it all up. At this point, we need to take responsibility for our actions here. And although I do feel bad that Sean Reed um, went out the way that he went out, and of course I do believe there needs to be an investigation into this so that we can bring to justice, because this man, I don't think this boy had a, a firearm on him. His pants was falling all the way to his knees, girl. He was too busy trying to pick them up and hold the phone. I have no doubt in my mind that all of this is a setup to make it look justifiable. That's how I look at the situation. But we have to, again, take responsibility. Sean Reed, live by the sword, die by the sword. This goes for all of our young black boys, our young black girls, and the parents out there. You need to teach your children. Don't put yourself in situations knowing how the times are. You're out here fleeing and eluding, girl. And at the end of the day, look what happened to you. You are laughing on live, running away from the cops. Thinking that these crackers ain't going to shoot your motherfucking black ass in the street. They don't give a fuck. Girl, that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. But I understand at the same time that two wrongs don't make a right. And none of this shit is right. And all those officers that were involved in this shootout, guess what, girl? And it comes out that this is true and it's a lot, all of these bitches fabricated their statements. They need to be thrown away, bitch. Throw those crackers under the jail. But I also want this to be a lesson to our black people, honey, our black children, our black sons out here. Stop fucking playing in the streets. Stop playing around with these motherfucking white people. They don't give a fuck about you. You are one more person off the earth that they want. One less nigga in the world. That's what the fuck they want. Stop giving these motherfuckers what they want. And that's all I really have for this. And, 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 you know, I wish nothing but peace and blessings over the world. But I do want to let our black people know, when is enough enough for us? That's the real question. That's the ultimate question for our community. When are we going to rise up and say, you know what, brother, sister, I'm no longer going to treat you like shit anymore. I'm no longer going to rob your house or try to beat your kid's ass. I'm no longer going to be doing all this fuckery in the neighborhood. We're going to lift our communities up. We're going to build these bridges of unity to where we can, we can get everybody together. Okay? Because we know there's not just black people. Okay? There's many different shades of black. We all need to just come together. All the light-skinned motherfuckers join the chocolate motherfuckers. Yes, God, honey. You know, we look good on each other. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> we need to be loving on each other and doing for each other. And we need to stand up for ourselves against these great evils that want to see us motherfucking um, wiped off the face of the earth. I've been telling y'all this. I've been telling y'all this. Don't let your fucking foot up from these bitches' necks. We need to be bringing awareness and making these motherfuckers take responsibility for their actions. I'm glad to see some resolution is coming for Ahmad um, Aubrey um, with this Sean Reed situation. Again, two things to look at in this is, yes, we I totally believe the officers are at fault. We need to throw them whores under the jail, probably death penalty as well, especially if it comes out that this boy did not have a weapon on him. Um, but also take away from that situation, like black people, we need to do better at raising our children. We need to be doing our best to instill in our black boys. That bitch, stop playing around with these motherfuckers. Stop playing around. It's no joke. You laughing now, but bitch, you're going to be crying later. Hello, God. Be blessed, never stressed, guys. And I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Um, good things are coming after I come back from my hiatus. So please be on the lookout. Um, yes, thank you for joining and loving me. I appreciate it because I love all of y'all. Um, be blessed, never stressed. Bye.